Okay, this screencast is targeted again at question 1b in, where, in that we're explaining how the structure of the skeletal system is, su is suited to supporting the body and usually we kind of think uh, we're going to explain how, how the skeleton supports the body through sort of physical activity and obviously you can see my mini me, my bit emoji uh, going through some strenuous activity um, as you can see I'm probably lifting 300 pounds something like that um, and so how does the <laughs> how does the bones how does the skeletal system uh, help my body to resist those kind of forces well first of all like we did in in the in the last screencast you need to identify what type of bone uh, and give a few examples you may already be thinking the type of bone that helps support my body uh, are long bones. Long bones. So long bones are really mainly involved in the support of our body. And example, the classic example would be the femur. You can also add in any other long bones that you think of that are um, sort of supporting the body as you can see with the upper arms there you've got the ulna radius and humerus etc etc but for this screencast we're going to use the femur now long bones are completely structurally different to flat bones in that they are hollow now you're going to learn a lot more about the sort of microstructure of a long bone for your third question and indeed you're going to have to draw a labeled diagram but long bones all the way down the middle have a hollow cavity called the medullary cavity and in that they are described as hollow so how does that help? How does that help? Well, it gives us something called um, the best strength to weight ratio. The best strength to weight ratio. And it's something that we're going to be investigating in class using a lot of cardboard, some weights and some uh, paper paper legs um, and, and I'll, I'll use the analogy that we use in the class so if we take a box or a tabletop and we get we make some legs and let's say we in this box we fold up an A4 page of paper really tightly and really solidly to make four legs like that so we've basically took an A4 paper put it on its side and then folded it up as tightly as possible to make solid legs they're solid legs then if we took the same sort of tabletop and we rolled the paper up so we rolled them into sort of cylinders into cylinders and we started adding weights to these tables then what we would see is that this structure here would allow us to to hold far more weight than this structure so what that means is for the same weight i.e. for the same amount of material to make the legs so we've used four a4 pieces of paper to make each of the legs and all we've done is folded this one up as tightly as possible to make it as solid as possible and we've made this leg or these legs here hollow so we've made them like into a cylinder but we've only used the same amount of material we would expect to get I don't know we've had different uh, results in the sort of class 
uh, experiments in this but you know you're looking at 10 to 15 times the strength of this one of the solid legs so what the strength to weight ratio term means is for the same amount of material we get a much better strength back we're able to resist a lot more force okay however if we filled these hollow legs so if we made the same table again and we made the same size hollow legs but this time we filled the hollow legs in to be solid that's bad drawing but you get the impression then this one would give us more strength however if we were going to fill these legs with paper we might need i don't know 30 sheets of a4 paper to make these legs solid and that is crucially important because we're not after the maximum strength of our bones we don't want to be built like the terminator otherwise we might have you know metal bones the problem with that is that it would weigh a heck of a lot we'd need a lot more material to make those bones we'd therefore be very heavy we would need a lot more weight in our bones and that's why the strength to weight ratio is really important for our bones it's about producing the maximum strength for the minimum amount of weight why is that important well we don't want to be wasting energy carting heavy bones around although they would be super strong we would need to produce an absolute ton of energy and that's just not efficient for an organism such as ours we need to be able to produce the maximum strength with the minimum weight which allows us to move efficiently and effectively so it gives us the maximum strength for the minimum weight or for the minimum amount of bone material and that is why your bones are hollow and that is why it gives us the best strength to support our body okay hopefully that it makes sense to you now if we um, take uh, a bone such a long bone such as this and we let's just draw another one so here's a long bone and we press down on it so we compress it which is what's happening in my legs right there it's been pressed down that the long bone is being pressed now if this was a stick and we pressed it down where is it most likely to snap well if you press down on a stick into the floor you would probably end up with something like this and it's snapping in the middle now if you've seen my structure of the uh, long bone video or screencast or you've been in the lesson then you'll know that this bit the shaft of the bone is called the diaphysis and it's the diaphysis that is the weakest point in a long bone is the weakest point in a long bone so it makes sense then that the body is able to reinforce this area to stop it from snapping and that's exactly what the cells of the bone can do if it's stimulated through exercise to make it stronger at that point and for this we talk about the cells within our bone and the two types of cell that we're going to talk about are osteo osteo meaning bone so whenever you see osteo it means bone osteoblasts and osteoclasts now I'm not going to go fully into the cells this time 
it is available there are osteogenic cells and osteocytes as well but osteoblasts simply put they are the builders so if you try to remember B for builders and what will happen is that if you start exercising on your bone then a stimulus occurs which triggers these osteoblasts somehow and you can ask me to explain it in your own time if you wish the osteoblasts start reinforcing this bone compact bone around the diaphysis so you may see I don't know so if this is a cross section of that so if we took a cross section of that and that was the medullary cavity in the inside then rather than seeing I don't know this kind of thickness of compact bone in a trained person we might see something like this so you can see the thickness of the compact bone is far higher in somebody that's trained than untrained. So the amount of physical activity that you do triggers these osteoblasts to reinforce bones at certain points, and in particular diaphysis. Um, and we call that ability to, to adapt, the ability to adapt to stimulus in terms of the strength of the bone is called Wolf's Law. Oh! Brilliant. Wolf's Law. Wolf's Law is the ability of a bone to adapt to the stimulus that's placed upon it. So if you put a lot of impact on bones through exercise, then the chances are that your osteoblasts are going to reinforce those long bones at the points of weakness but also the opposite occurs so if somebody is bedridden somebody is lazy somebody who spends a lot of time on the backside who doesn't put uh, impact on these long bones then the body is stimulated to, to destroy this tissue to destroy the the cells to destroy the compact bone and therefore make the bones weaker because um, if somebody doesn't use it it dead weight the body thinks why are we carrying around extra weight and using energy to move the extra weight when basically we can just get rid of it and so that's what happens and if you uh, think about Major Tim Peake or any of the astronauts on the International Space Station they have to go through rigorous physical exercise every day hours and hours of every day in order to put pressure on their bones in order to maintain the density of their bones and no matter how much they do when they come back to earth they've lost I can't remember the exact figure but they've lost 10 years uh, of their bone structure because they've been in weightlessness they've not been putting pressure on their bones and their bone their osteoclasts clasts mean see for cleave or destroy um, destroy their bone tissue and make the bones lighter okay so we've got quite a bit of, i'd say medium technical information there um but it's still i think quite it does make sense and to summarize when you're trying to explain how the structure of the skeletal system is suited to support what we've got is that they are hollow okay they are hollow and, and, and in particular long bones are hollow such as the femur which gives the best strength to weight ratio when dealing with uh, how much um, strength how much resistance to force we get for the same amount of bone material so the fact that they're hollow gives us a maximum strength to the minimum amount of weight which is highly efficient for the human body if the bones were solid they would give us more strength but they would be far too heavy and therefore they would cost us far too much energy to move around and therefore we would be inefficient so that's the strength to weight ratio bit the second bit is the fact that bones are able to respond or long bones are able to respond to stimulus that's placed on them which is called wolf's law and wolf's law basically means that if a bone is stimulated i don't know through exercise for example then your bones oh, sorry your, your cells of the bone 
i.e. osteoblasts, are able to build bone to reinforce long bones at specific points, such as trained and untrained athletes. However, if no exercise or stimulus is put on those bones, the opposite can occur and osteoclasts can cleave this bone away and make it lighter again and make it less strong. And we call that modeling and remodeling of bone, anyway, just to add on an extra a term. So hopefully, uh, we're more about the understanding at this point, and hopefully you can go away and make sense of why bones are hollow in relation to strength to weight ratio. And if you've got any questions, come and ask me, or rewind this video, or Google it, um, get into it, and, and get that understanding there. And finally, you need to try and understand how bones remodel themselves to be stronger in certain places, and that's Wolf's Law, and how the, um, the cells of the bones work. Now, I know in our revision guide there's links to videos which shows you how these work. There's lots of other resources that you might like to look at in terms of how osteocytes and osteogenic cells work. Uh, there's hopefully sparking off some kind of... Um, other ex you know wider learning there but if you've got any questions come and ask me because we're really bothered about understanding at this point what you need to do in the future is to try and get this down in some kind of sentence form into some kind of nicely written form for your cell biology test okay hope this is useful and good luck